any professional in the field of architecture or construction for that matter, and any client as well, will tell you that the most important aspect is the finances, the economic aspect, uh, especially for the clients, I would say. Please join me as I sit down with Mr. Felix Okoboy, the board chairperson of the Uganda Development Bank, who also happens to be a professional architect. We will be discussing issues pertaining to the economic side and the impact that this architecture, the contemporary architecture that we, we see and celebrate around Uganda, what impact it's having economically. Hi, Felix. Hi, Donna. Thank you for you joining me today. Thank you for um, having me. <laughs> my pleasure. Thank I'm hoping we can um, delve into this aspect of care and the economical side of things for, okay. for both architects and clients. Okay. And uh, yeah, the general public, I think there is some information that we could um, pick from you, okay. given your experience and background. Okay. Yeah, so for starters, mm. I'd like to know if you have any tips or pointers or things that usually go amiss when people are thinking of or starting uh, an architectural project, a building project. From the financial point of from view. From the financial point of view. Uh, I, think the, I think the disconnect comes from uh, from the very beginning, mm -hmm. financially. When, I, when you look at the uh, professionals who are working on something like the architect, engineer, and the client. Uh, as, a, as, a, as a professional architect, you, you're always looking at coming out with the best product. But the client actually is thinking about the money from the beginning. Yeah. Uh, and, and sometimes those views don't meet. The, the architect always thinks that whatever they come out with, even if it costs a bit more, the, act, the client will be willing to pay that bit more because it will look with, better. Yeah. yeah. And it's not always the case. Most of the time, the most important thing for the client is money. Mm -hmm. And for the architect, it's, it's the design. That's the way we are wired. So that's already where the first problem comes in. You have to, as an architect, you have to start mm -hmm. off thinking like a client and thinking that if it was your money, wouldn't you be cutting costs? Wouldn't you be looking to save yeah. uh, as best you can? Um, then, uh, if you, if when architects are in, in university or school, architecture school, the best value you can have is to, at that point, midway through your course, to try and start thinking about uh, cost-conscious design. And uh, people always, architects always think that to have a better design, you need to spend more or to use more of the client's money. It's yeah. not even true. <laughs> it's not even true. I mean, and, you know, uh, you, you can use materials that are more readily available. Yes. And, and you, one should start thinking that way, that is there a, a cheaper way of doing this mm -hmm. to achieve the same result? Because if it's in your DNA, then you, you make you 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 be a more successful architect because clients will appreciate you more because you yeah. save more of their money. Yeah. Um, so uh, that this that that mentality starts from university, from the course as a student through your time as a professional, and you already then start off on on the correct footing. Um, but of course the the, 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 how you design also affects the price. When I went into finance, uh, uh, my, my first role or roles were really around people had already built something and were asking uh, or had already designed or had already gotten designs from an architect and were saying, uh, when you look at this, is this, uh, is this the best value for money? So yeah. for example, I'll give you a very good example. Some, if I want to really have a hotel with a very wide corridor, and, 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 and I'm sure the design is a three meter wide corridor. Yeah. Then the client might ask, uh, of course that reduces the overall usable space yes. and size of room. Is, would the effect be the same if the corridor was two meters? Uh, and so that, 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 you have to have an architectural background, but you also have to have a finance Financial, background to kind yeah. of manage. And I did quite a few projects just like that. An architect has designed it and I'm asked to, 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 to check it for its financial feasibility. And come and kind of audit it. Yes, and audit it, exactly. Yeah. So it's more like a financial design audit. Yeah. Because most of the money is lost in the design already. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and I did a lot. Of, so it's, it's um, 
people, uh, creative types, and architects are creative types, have to understand that uh, for a client, money is the most important thing on their mind. They do want a good product. Yes. But the main worry of a client building is money. Yeah. yeah. And, and attaining value for it. And attaining good value, value for, for it. it. Yes. It's a winning spending. So um, one, of my, one of my favorite uh, memories from, uh, from being a, a, lecture, a lecturer was a student who actually told me that, you know, because uh, I used to try and infuse a lot of financial literacy in my classes was a student who told me that I'm, I'm not very interested in money. Actually, he's still a friend of mine right now. I'm, only, I'm not interested in the money issue. I just want to design. Uh, money is not that important yeah. to me. Of course, I told him he would eat his words years later. Yeah. <laughs> and he, he actually ate his words because obviously where he is now, money is important because he, he has to pay bills. And... Yeah. So uh, you, can't, you can't disconnect your work as a professional with, the, with, the, with money because your clients in any profession are worried about that yeah. at most. Yeah, I think many people, uh, again, just this is very, very at the background of everything. Yeah. I think they're going to engage it during yeah. the process of construction yeah. or afterwards. Yeah. But it really starts at the planning phase. It's yeah. like, where are you sourcing your materials? What kind exactly. of materials are they? How yes. durable are they? Are yes. you flying in, flying in stuff from, I yes. don't know, Turkey when you could yes. actually, you can get, actually it get it locally yeah. sourced yes. here yes. just as good? Yeah. So there are things like that that people don't think about yeah. because I guess, again, maybe they're focusing more on the aesthetic exactly. aspect. Exactly, yeah. You look at the client the and you think he can afford this. Yeah. So let me fly it in. Yeah. But even a guy who can afford it doesn't want to pay it if he doesn't have it. Yeah. Yeah. So people don't have that. Um, and, and you know, if you have that mentality, it flows through everything, everything. you do, even your presentation to the client. Because if I sat with you and said, um, uh, Donna, actually your house, we're going to do this, is going to have this effect. Uh, we could have gotten this stuff from Turkey, but uh, we found we could source this locally and it's cheaper. If I'm talking to you as a client, and I'm, I, I automatically know you're cost conscious and I'll yeah. like you more for yeah. it. Yeah. I'd be very impressed with that as a client. Yes, exactly. But most people just come and say, yeah, now this will look good. These tires are going to be from Turkey. Those pillars are from Macedonia. <laughs> you know, and, and you're sitting there thinking, yeah, it looks nice, but who, who's going to pay for all this all stuff? These, yeah. 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 So, and then you start thinking, you're not worried about my worries. Yeah. I'm worried about the money you are just spending yeah. unnecessarily. And then automatically... The architect becomes a sort of parasite or pest to the, correct. To the client. Correct, in that yeah. Case. yeah. So, okay. so it's, import, it's really important for everything you do. Mm. And people just have to have that in their minds that just because you're creative, when, when I was a student, uh, a professor used to talk about the differences between functional art and non-functional. So, for example, architecture is functional art. Yes. Uh, and functional art has very specific costs and value attached to it. Mm. Whereas non-functional art, like a painting, uh, a client who wants to buy art and likes the painting is going to pay for it. And how do you price the value of a painting? It's dependent on the person yeah. who's buying it. But, uh, and, and so you may find very exaggerated values of non-functional art, whereas a client who is building has very specific a, a budget, yeah. whether he tells you or not, uh, a very specific ac uh, amounts that he can access, he or she can access. So you have to be conscious of that. Yeah. yeah. And fit into that. And fit into that, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so when we move on to now the construction phase, let's say we've planned everything beautiful, mm -hmm. fi financially beautiful. Financially yeah. beautiful, yeah. <laughs> There may be some compromises elsewhere, but yeah. if everything's according to plan, the client is happy with it, and now we're going to construction. Okay. What are some of the ways um, that, again, someone can be cautious of uh, money that goes spent maybe in a very subtle way that people may not notice uh, okay. when it comes to construction, maybe with the methods or or the, the skills that people yeah. that people hire on site. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think there may be a gap there as well. There's a huge gap. And, and, and of course, the costs uh, in the construction phase are linked to uh, your, your design. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, a very good example is 
curved features are going to be more expensive or harder to, to build mm. than very regular right angle features. Yeah. And so uh, if I just came and unilaterally wanted to design a curved wall, uh, the way it looks on paper can only uh, be equivalent to what it looks like on site if you get contractors who can execute to that level of skill. Mm. Uh, if it's an established contractor, that may well be possible. But if it's a, a fundi and it's for a residential house, you may well design something on paper that looks horrible when it's a fundi tries to execute. And um, when, you, when, you, when you start uh, studying building economics, you start thinking about things like, uh, you start realizing there's certain things that drive up the construction cost, which many people don't really pay an eye or, or, or really uh, pay, pay attention, pay attention to. to. Uh, variations, obviously, uh, are a huge problem. Mm. Uh, and variations will always be there because decisions change, unexpected things arise. But um, if I go to a site and try and think about uh, what could cause me uh, a, a lot of cost hikes here that I may miss. And maybe simple things like uh, I don't notice that the ground is rocky. Yeah. And I need to, uh, that will cost a bit more to, 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 to get through to a foundation level. Mm. Uh, storage, even. Storage. Material storage. Material storage, <laughs> yeah. for example, yes. How do I source for building materials mm. uh, and how is the timing on that? Yeah. So, uh, in construction, there are very many issues uh, that you, you go through, even hiring the contractor. Mm -hmm. um, have I made sure in the tender process, I know exactly how long the contractor should be on site? Because, of course, every day the contractor is on site costs you. Money, yeah. 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 Um, so it, it, is really, it is really very... Uh, actually, the construction phase uh, uh, usually is where a lot of the money is lost. And what most architects, engineers, and, and other professionals forget is that when a client runs out of money, he'll cut you first. If the contract, if the contractor is on site building, has to keep going. yes, the contractor is like, I don't want this guy to stop. Yeah. He's the one, when I go to site, I see that wall has come up, it's the guy builder is yeah. doing it. At some point, you start thinking like, uh, maybe I can get a cheaper guy mm. who will oversee this guy to make sure the building goes up. So yeah. you have to show your value. Mm. You have to show your value even after the design phase. Otherwise, when... It's again, bringing in yeah. that financial mindfulness. Absolutely. Because when you save the client money, uh, you're, 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 you're saving him money that uh, ultimately may keep you hired. Yeah. Because okay. when he runs out of that money, it affects you as well. <laughs> he, the project stalls, he cuts you yeah, first. Yeah, yeah, the first one to yeah, go. Yeah, the first one to go, yeah. So that's you're, the issue. You're not doing anything uh, tangible in that moment to... Co correct, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So that's, that's usually what people uh, forget. Mm. But actually, uh, you, you need to save the, uh, the client money because you, you both are getting... Everyone is paid from that same pool. Yeah. Um, I just want to get your thoughts on on one particular method of construction. I haven't seen much of it mm. around Uganda, mm. but like uh, doing a modular build. I know in many cases where you have, you know, a repeat design, mm. the flows are exactly the same. Yeah. Why, why wouldn't someone do that? I, I, I don't have as much <laughs> financial oh. knowledge as you do, but in my mind, it makes sense to do that if you have a hotel for instance the rooms right. are exactly the same it's you know copy paste right. for maybe 10 floors yeah. why wouldn't someone do a modular build for, and yeah for hotel for example yeah so for that's hotel, the best for example instance. where you should yeah yeah um many 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 people when they design it don't actually know that certain aspects of design reduce cost. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you're conscious about it, you will try and standardize everything you yeah. do. Uh, you know, there are many issues, you know, s small things that add up, for example, back to back wet areas yes. that you can pipe once yeah. uh, in one in one place for two mm -hmm. for two rooms, for example. And and uh, it, that's that's a design issue. You know, try and put uh, let's say hotel rooms on either side of the corridor 
in, in the wet, wet areas in the same place. So it's a, it's a conscious decision that people who are cost conscious when they're designing have, mm -hmm. and you should. Because yeah. as soon as you start separating uh, wet areas, as, as, uh, to give that as an example, you start increasing costs. Extra piping. Extra piping, extra. exactly. Extra everything. Extra everything, much. yes. And <laughs> yeah. then you start, start seeing those costs tick up, and then they add up for, for piping here, for electricals there, and then all of a sudden, the, the building is like 50% uh, higher yeah. in costs than it would have been. Over, and then, over budget. Yeah. So, so it's, it's, it's stuff like that. Eh? It's stuff like that. And you know, I, I, used, to, I used to start off very simply by uh, when, when I was asked to, to do a financial design audit, as you call it, to just price uh, my fees as a percentage of the money that I save. <laughs> That's a, that's a good one. It's a good one because yeah. a client is not going to feel I could pay you a, a, a huge fee, but you might not actually save, save me anything. Me anything. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here it's a win-win. He knows definitely if you do save, it's good for him. Yeah. A percentage of that he's willing to forego yeah. because of because of that. So the client usually is more amenable, to, and you 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 potentially in, actually in all cases I found out that the fee in that case, case is higher. Than it would have been if you had said, "I'm I'm going to do this assignment and I, um, I'll charge you this," and everyone is happy about it. Mm. Yeah. So and 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 usually it's all around. I found seventy five percent of the issues that you save on are design issues where it's not optimized, and it might even be moving a very long wall, let's say a hotel corridor, moving it back or forward mm -hmm. by say. Half a meter, and that makes That's a, a world of saving. difference. Yeah, yeah, huge. huge. So if it's for office space, the usable office space, In, it, it shoots it, it shoots up. up yeah, yes. and which so. is you know yeah, the bigger the square area, you can actually <laughs> get the, rent you get out. money on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that so, makes that, that's good yeah. to hear. Yeah, so it's just small things like that. Does the corridor have to be two meters? It can be. It can get the same effect for one meter seven. Yeah, you know, does this have to be? You know. Because walls matter. Remember when we used to draw uh, with pencil? Yes. And then you think, oh, this, this room works actually. It's like that. Then you start putting in walls. And all of a sudden, the room starts, you can't fit a bathtub. You can't. It's the same thing. Yes. Walls matter. Yeah. Uh, the walls have particular thickness that take a particular volume mm. or, so, or area. And you have to think through small, small things. And when they add up, you really get a huge cost saving. Yeah. Okay, that's, yeah. that's, that's good to keep in mind. Yeah. Because I think, yeah, again, many times, these things just go you like yeah i designed the space this is it yeah without thinking about <laughs> yeah the extra step to yeah. okay let's adjust this let's yeah. i don't know reduce the wall thickness yes. here so we can increase the space there yeah yeah okay yeah. that's cool um one last one mm. now we've gone through the process we've planned we've done construction we're now handover stage the building is being used Okay. Um, I have noticed this around Kampala with some buildings. I, I don't know what the story is behind them, but I, as, as an outsider looking in, mm. this is what I've noticed. Sometimes buildings go up really, really quick. Mm. Uh, with hotels, mostly hotels actually, I've noticed this with. Uh, they go up and then no activity. Zero occupants for, for years. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, story anyway, behind that, it. yeah, I don't know the story behind it, yeah. but I know that's definitely a financial setback for whoever owns the building and put it up in a hurry with yeah. the, again, the expectation, build it and they will come, yeah. and then they don't come. Yeah, you know, you know the, 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 the so-called business case that people make a lot for, for constructing something tends to be, make very many dangerous assumptions. Mm. Um, if, 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 if Donna built a hotel today and then Donna uh, may have timed a, a, a good point in the cycle and then Felix after three years says, talks to Donna and Donna says, oh, I made so much money for my hotel, then I start building a hotel which is completed in two years, then I may time the bottom end of the cycle. Um, I may not fare economically as, 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 well, as, as well as Donna. Yeah. So uh, no one really... Uh, 
a lot of our market information about what uh, what the best uh, um, buildings to erect are is anecdotal. It's not mm. it's not based on any solid d data or solid information. So you find it's like well, what friends say, what um, and and um, so uh, the decision to build a hotel is not well informed sometimes, or to build another, you know, and that has happened. The, the the anecdotal information, but also the lag, the lag uh, factor where uh, most times people time the wrong end of the cycle is very common. The best example in Kampala is commercial office space. Mm -hmm. Obviously, okay, putting aside COVID because COVID didn't help uh, office rental, but even before COVID, commercial real estate was one of the first. Uh, commercial office space was one of the worst performing asset classes, and it was. Uh, you, 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 I mean, even definitely after COVID, right now, if you wanted to rent an office, the prices would be uh, really low. Yeah. Uh, because there's no demand for them anyway. Uh, most people are. Uh, people have realized they can work a different they can way. Work a different way, yeah. So they are, they are, but but the reason why people uh, structures go up uh, uh, quickly and then um, uh, and then stall is uh, a, a lot of times people get a windfall. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, and then I uh, said, let me just start, I've always wanted to have an apartment block. Let me start building that. And you don't uh, start with the overall planning first and say, let me get the designs done, let me get them costed, how much will this cost? Because if you did that, then maybe you'll find out that uh, uh, you couldn't afford it. Mm. So many people rush through that very quickly, uh, do it, subpar or not at all and then start building and then many times people think established contractors are too expensive so they, they try to, to, to cut costs you try and cut costs and wing it, <laughs> in wing the it wrong place the <laughs> and they find those guys end up being more expensive than them because they start redoing stuff yeah 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 i've, I've seen that happen a yeah. few times yeah and whereas with a contractor if you sign a a contract said you're going to build this at a cost of this eh? within this time yeah he's not going to uh make mistakes because the, the redoing is on him yeah it's on, on him yeah okay but if fundi will tell me bring me seven bags of cement and, 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 and I, I do then if he makes a mistake you have to bring like, another to seven bags yeah, we need to break, yeah. <laughs> so the cost is on you yeah. yeah yeah so there are many issues that go in there yeah yeah Okay. You think you're saving, so, but cheap is always more expensive. Yeah. In the long run, the long yes. Run, yeah. I, I yeah. keep trying to explain this to people, yeah. but uh, yeah. it's, it's somehow it takes a while. I think it, it takes it some experience before people you get hammered actually, first. Yeah. <laughs> before yeah. you get it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So there's then an element of um, like pre feasibility study, uh, market research type thing to yeah. to assess the the need for any structure you're going to put up. Then. Correct. As opposed to, Correct. oh, my friend Felix put this thing up and yeah. it's doing really well. I'm yeah. sure if I do it, yeah. then just next door it will do Should just do as well. It. Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah, I, yeah. I mean, we, we see these yeah. things all the time. Yeah. People pop up, you know, yeah. this new restaurant next to this yeah. one. And yeah. One's doing really well and the other yeah. one even steps into. Yeah. I mean, and the other things that go into it, it may be the service in the other restaurant, it may be the yeah. chef. Uh, or it may be the market can only really handle one, one of them. One in that area. And then two, both of you get hammered. You know, I mean, you both don't do well, you know, and you don't think maybe I can do it somewhere where there's no restaurant like this, yeah. but also needs the same service. So, but you, you guys yeah. are just like, this that's works <laughs> here beside Donna. That's, that's, that's the there. research I'm yeah. talking about. Yeah. I mean, if, yeah. if the market is saturated in that area, yeah. yes. why not? If you really, if it really must be a restaurant, yeah. why not think of a similar, else? similar place yeah. somewhere else? Yeah, that, that's how... That is the level of thinking that needs to go in before you just start applying mm. money towards the project. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much, Felix. Anytime, Don. <laughs> it was a pleasure talking to you. It was fun talking to you yeah. and uh, highlighting all these little things that <laughs> we, we many times ignore. Yeah, but the, I mean, that's the bottom line. Money, uh, 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 professionals to learn how to marry creativity and money. If you don't, uh, the creativity itself does not matter because for a client who yes wants a good product but the paramount thing on a client's mind is his or her money yes yeah you can't run away from that yeah
because it's useless you giving me some good design that I can't afford. <laughs> or that's yeah. not going to bring returns as fast. As fast, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's interesting. Thank you. Thank you for your time, Felix. Anytime, Donna. Yeah. It was a pleasure talking to you. <laughs> it was more my pleasure, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.